Nika. So I'm starting another training with Ebden, who is warming up for the next uh, quarterfinals. He did a very good job today. Uh, I mean, uh, this tournament. He did a very good job at this tournament, and hope uh, that he will go further. So welcome back to another 10 Fitman video. As you could see in this intro, this is just before my training with Matthew Ebden. And this was right before his quarterfinal match, which he would play against Borna Choric. And remember, this was in back in 2018 in Shanghai at this amazing tournament Rolex Shanghai Masters where I was on the team as one of the hitting partners and on the way to his quarterfinals Matthew had a couple of great wins again as you saw in the beginning he beat Tiafo Dominic Team and Peter Goyemchik and then he was about to face Borna Choric and uh, you can see here I was warming up as well he was on the other side with his coach they were finishing the warm-up and we were about to start the training here by the way this was our second training I believe we trained before his previous match which was the, the last 16 and this is where he beat Goevchik I believe maybe it was also before, I'm not sure, it was a while ago. So again, it's always very, very special this beginning when you first start hitting in this very nice and easy rhythm. I remember, and at this point I was already a bit more relaxed and every time when you play with a player for the second time or third time or some other, like, or many more times, right? The more you play, you will get more relaxed so you'll really be able to enjoy more and I remember this was like in the afternoon I already I probably had some trainings before this so I was feeling great in a flow and I was just able I was able to really enjoy it just let it go and you could see there I hit the one-handed backhand and I would use this opportunity to tell you a little bit more about Matthew Ebden who is from Australia by the way and he had a really really great career so far and uh, one of his best results is actually this year Australian Open doubles final he partnered up with Max Purcell Purcell also from Australia and they just fell short to Kokinakis and Kyrgios who won their first Grand Slam title in doubles. That was really amazing to see four Australian players in semifinals, in the finals for doubles, men's doubles. He also won one Grand Slam, this is in mixed doubles and this was back in 2013 with Jamilia uh, Gaidoshova, Gaidoshova also from Australia and they they won in the final and also he lost in the final 2021 in mixed doubles uh, partnering up with Samantha Stosser apart from that he reached the finals of one ATP event uh, 250 series uh, where he lost to John Isner in two close sets in doubles he won one of the ATP 500 series in Mexico together with Kevin Anderson they beat Feliciano Lopez and Max Miri in the final so he had some really really big results especially in doubles but as a singles player maybe you wouldn't think so but let me tell you he had some big wins actually he beat some players who ranked in top 10 for example Gilles Simon Matthew beat him two times and then he beat once Berrettini 
he beat Blake, uh, Jurgen Melzer, Dominic Team, and this was uh, this year at Shanghai Masters. Uh, Marcus Bagdaris, he beat also Marty Fish one time, current catch and of David Goffin, and then John Isner. So these are his best wins, actually the wins for against the players who were top 10. And in his futures and challenger circuit, he had really, really amazing results. So at the challenger two level, 13 finals, out of which he won nine. And uh, on the futures tour, he played eight finals and he won six out of those. So he had a really, really good career early on. And then after, as you can see, he had some pretty big wins and uh, good results in doubles, especially. So that's about his career. And here I will focus a bit more on this training and then just in general kind of reflect back. So in the beginning, you could see that we were just going quite easy. And then here is where <laughs> Matthew started like really hitting some rockets. And you can see that the swings and the way he hits, it looks quite effortless, easy, but then the ball comes so fast. It almost always feels like I will be late, like here, you can see that. And then he was also letting go a bit and he was trying to go for certain shots. This is often what happens uh, when players are warming up, so they will start easy. And then after that, they would go for some big shots and try to hit some corners and Obviously, I was trying to get those balls back, but this is very tough, right? So I was giving my best, and then he was able to finish the point to one or to the other corner. And again, I remember it was very relaxing atmosphere, and his coach was really great, very friendly. Just made me feel comfortable, like almost at home, right? like this kind of safe feeling but I think this also has to do a lot with just me having more experiences here and training with more players so remember this was the quarterfinals day and I was there probably before the main draw started and I was getting used to the courts and I trained every day for at least two three or sometimes four times so yeah And it's interesting always when we had these trainings on the side courts. You can see the stands there. Actually, the stands are on both sides of the court. And there are always some people coming to watch. And of course, it depends on the player you're training with. The, the bigger the name, there will be more people sitting on those stands and watching, observing, taking photos, taking videos, asking for autographs after. Yes, another funny thing was that in the beginning here, maybe you saw it when I was just uh, placing the camera, I was kind of concerned about it because it's a very small camera, right? And there are always people passing by there. So I asked somebody to help me with the security guy to explain if uh, he could take care of camera or at least pay attention to the camera. And uh, unfortunately, you will see later towards the end of this video that somebody kind of turned the camera a bit. I don't know if it was on purpose or accidentally, but the view kind of changed. So this is where this video will end. But we did a lot of hitting beforehand. So, and here you can see we were getting some rhythm. I was, I was a bit uh, better with my timing. So we were able to hit some fastballs and keep the rally going, which is quite challenging. And these courts at Shanghai Rolex Masters are actually well known for their speed. And I remember when I was playing with Novak Djokovic the first time, our first training and the only training outside, he made a comment during the training how this courts here are so interesting and the surface is very interesting 
Novak said. He then explained, usually during the day and in the sun, the courts should be fast and then in the evening, when the sun is down, maybe it gets cooler, it should be a bit slower. But then he said, but here is different, here is opposite. Like when the sun goes down and then it gets dark, the courts get faster. So that was his comment on these courts during our first training. For the other players, wow, that was amazing. You can see how he was just feeling so good. And actually this year, I was checking also some of the stats for Matthew Ebden here. This year, Matthew reached his high, like his best rankings. And this happened exactly after this tournament because he reached the quarterfinals here. So he got ranked number 39 in the world. And this was again back in 2018. So that was his highest ranking, I believe so. And he had some years where, you know, he would go up and down with his rankings. Like 2016, uh, he was injured. So obviously dropped. And then 2017, uh, he won his first ATP singles final. And uh, after that, he was back to top 100. Later on, 2019 and 20, he dropped in his ranking below 300. But then, after that, in 2021 and this year, he had some great results in doubles. His current ranking in singles, it's 395. So he dropped in singles, uh, whereas in doubles, he's ranked 33 at the moment. So it looks like he's uh, been focusing more on doubles, as I said. But nevertheless, here we are watching this training where he was really giving a lot of emphasis on this ground strokes and just hitting through the middle. And then after that, uh, he came to the net here. And obviously he's amazing in doubles. So his volleys are super solid, rock solid. Even though you cannot always tell all this in the training, you can observe and notice the quality, but I feel all these players, they increase their level by 30, 40, maybe even 50% in matches. They get so sharp, so alert, right here. It's more like being relaxed and kind of getting ready. And this part of the training is probably one of my favorite when the player is at the net, so I can really focus on the footwork Basically, this is all I need to do, right? Everything happens so fast, you wouldn't think too much. So you would just go as fast as you can with your feet and then you just try to hit every ball back to the middle, to their bodies. And yeah, as you can see, that was quite fast. We went quite quickly through the volleys and it was time for a few smashes. It's also an interesting moment where you can kind of relax, but at the same time you have to still deliver good smashes. You have to give them a nice high ball so they can work on their smash, so they can warm up. guys they can they can hit some fast balls like this you could see yeah. all right so here it was time for some break and usually players also like to switch sides at some point so they can also experience from both ends and yeah, I use the time to get a towel, get some drink, get a few breaths. But as I remember this training, and as it looks like, not too intense, but at the same time, you still have to give 100% and you have to be engaged. So every break, it's great. Gets you recharged and ready to continue.
I believe now it was time for me to hit some volleys and this is where you will see that the camera will slowly rotate it's not some ghost thing so obviously somebody just like touched it I believe it was accident I don't know maybe it was even lucky that it didn't drop and again this is another part of the training where things happen very fast which I like a lot and it's also one of my favorite areas of the court being at the net just try to focus on my footwork and have this firm stable volleys I'm right here the camera is moving it looks like it's alive but yeah I had nobody to, to record so it was just random and you can see the other side of the stands now so there were quite a few people there watching us and uh, yeah that will be it for this training there are a couple more trainings I will share soon in this next period I have actually quite a few of these videos that I didn't share before so I'm kind of going back and checking all my files and I will try to share and I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you found it useful and maybe you learned some more information about Matthew Ebden really amazing player and most of all great person very kind and always friendly and uh, really can learn a lot from him so that's it thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon in our next video